This is the next video in dimensional text. Unfortunately, when I did the next part of this video, I didn't hit record. So I had already done the perspective lines for all the letters through. So I erased out the A, the N, the D, and I'm redoing it so that you can see what the process is. So since this text is in one point perspective, all of the perspective lines are going to go from the front of the letter back to that one vanishing point. There's only one direction it can go, and that's back to the vanishing point. So with the A and the N and the D, I'm finding all those points like corners, um, termination lines, and they all go back towards that vanishing point. The next thing you want to determine is how deep the letters are. I don't necessarily care that they are all the same depth, but you'll want to make sure that within each letter there the, the depth is consistent. The exterior for the A is pretty simple. My horizontal is going to be horizontal just like the front of the letter, and that descending angle is also going to be at the same angle as the front of the A. Where it gets a little bit tricky is on the inside of the A. To get the inside section of that A and get the depth so that it corresponds, I'm going to need to draw a parallel line from this back corner to where it meets the inside of that A. So this line that I'm drawing down is parallel to the front, and that gives me an intersection point. It tells me that with that diagonal and that horizontal, that is the depth of that A. You can also, with the bottom of that leg, it will tell you whether you need to do a, an intersection point there or whether it's fine. Okay, on the end, you can see that both the top of the left and the top of the right, by doing one horizontal line, I've established the depth of this end. The vertical is just going to be a uh, vertical straight and where that intersects that linear perspective line, that tells me that's where the back of that N is. And then using my horizontal, that will tell me where the linear perspective line on the left leg intersects. and I draw my vertical from that top corner. These should match, and they do. That's a good sign. Last line left is this diagonal, and it's gonna be parallel to the other diagonals here as well. And you should see that this point connects to that bottom right hand corner. Looks pretty good. Now let's tackle the D. D is a little bit tricky because we have that curve, but I can still establish with a horizontal hash where the back of that D is going to be. And one thing that we know about the D is that the front curve of that D and the back curve of that D will be the same curve. 
So where that back edge starts to curve, I know that as that drops down from that back corner, that's gonna be the termination point for that curve. And this can take some work. My, my first rough hand in was pretty, pretty bad. But I know that that, that top corner and the bottom corner of that D have to be vertical to each other. And now what I'm doing is I'm just penciling in, I'm trying to mimic that front of that D, that negative space that's inside the D. Drawing from the farthest point on that curve, running tangent up to the vanishing point, that will give us that right-hand side edge of the D. This can really take a lot of working and reworking, trying to get those curves to look right. What everyone has a tendency to do, and I, I do for sure in this drawing, is the more time you spend on something, the thicker the lines will get and they start to draw more attention than you would like to. So I'm erasing, reworking. At the end, I'll want to correct that by making the front lines heavier and letting those back lines be a little bit thinner and lighter. And remember, every point that you have, a corner or an edge on a letter, is it can only go back to that vanishing point. If it's not going back to that vanishing point, it's either going to be a horizontal or a vertical, or it's going to mimic one of the diagonals that's in the letter.